Hello, you sentient ball of stardust. My name is Casey Davis. I'm a therapist, and I'm an author of the book, How to Keep House While Drowning, where I talk about ways to make it a little bit easier to take care of yourself when you're overwhelmed, stressed, have mental health issues, physical health issues, or maybe you're just in a hard season of life. Maybe you're looking for a place that you can come and listen to some practical advice. This is a podcast for all of the self-help rejects. We're going to talk about skills for survival and self-kindness. And I'm going to leave the pop psychology at the door. I promise not to tell you to meditate or to journal. We're just going to give you some really insightful conversations with hopefully some practical advice. So I don't believe you need to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. I don't want you to just try harder. And I don't believe that laziness exists. So join me over on Struggle Care, where we can find compassionate solutions that help us function a little bit better. Check out great deals throughout the store at Safeway. This week at Safeway, get mega packs of USDA Choice Boneless Beef Chuck Roast for $3.97 per pound with digital coupon limit two packages. Plus, Hass Avocados are 10 for $10 member price. And get Fuji Apples for just 77 cents per pound with digital coupon. Also this week at Safeway, get selected varieties of Lucerne Milk Gallons for the member price of $3.99 each when you buy two. Visit Safeway.com or head into your local store for more deals. Stove Leg Media, igniting conversation. Hey y'all, it's me, your girl, Elena Grace, and you're listening to another episode of I've Been Thinking. So as always, thank you for that. I am here today to bring you a super, super interesting episode. I am talking to country kind of music singer Lou Ridley. She is honestly so much fun. She is so much fun to talk to. Lou, thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me do this. Like, I want to say that first and foremost. I love Lou's music and I love getting to know her. Um, So I think you guys are just absolutely going to love this. She is so sweet. She is truly a musical artist. She is an activist, an advocate. She is really like-minded to me in that she really focuses on uplifting other people and critical thinking and all of these things. So she very much fits in with I've been thinking and what we do here. And so I am just thrilled to bring this episode to you. Lou and I talk about kind of how and why she doesn't really fit into the country music scene and the ways she has been kind of excluded from it and some of the reasons that she has. We also get to talk about Oh, such such honestly a wide variety of things. How she ended up getting back into making music as her job. We talk about the Western world and specifically the U.S. being lacking in a sense of community. We talk about living your purpose and what Lou believes her life's purpose is. We talk about the importance of making a difference in the world. And we talk about being shut out from communities and places where you know that you belong uh, in one way or another, right? So we really run the gambit in this episode in the best way. But Lou is so fun to talk to and she is so much fun to hear from. So I hope that you guys love this episode and I hope that you get something from it. I hope that if nothing else, you've discovered a wonderful new musician today. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, I hope that you guys love this. I will say I have to figure out a new like distance recording method because the one I've been using has been giving me problems. I had a, a moment during this recording. It was actually a few moments where Lou dropped out and yada, yada, yada. And so it's just been frustrating. But the sound eh, on this one, I'm not gonna lie. Poor, poor Tyler, our new editor over here. He is absolutely ready to strangle me. But mm. It is what it is. Well, Lou will be back in the future, I'm sure. And 
we'll have the sound situation figured out by then. God bless America. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you love this episode. And this is Lou Ridley. So um, I'm Lou Ridley. I'm from Texas originally, and I am a country-ish artist and human rights advocate. I love that. And I love that you call yourself country-ish because that's... (laughs) Kind of like I've been listening to your music on repeat all morning, um, <laughs> just like getting myself ready for mm-hmm. this. And um, I would also describe it as country ish, but definitely not your typical. And that's kind of why you're here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like when I started making music, I, I think I really resisted the fact that I kind of, I mean, my whole family's pretty country. And, you know, I grew up with a horse and I grew up on a ranch and I grew up listening to country music. And then like when I got into music, it was like this weird thing. Well, it's not that weird, but I essentially wanted to reject it because of, you know, childhood traumas and things like that. So I tried for a long time to stay away from country. And because the reality is like a lot of country is really corny and I just didn't, I, I didn't find myself in a lot of you know, country artists. And I didn't, I can't tell half of them apart. So I just didn't want to do it. And then, you know, I, when quarantine happened, I, um, my friend would send me eight bar loops at the time I lived in LA. He'd send me like little loops. And I just kept, when I was alone and left to my vices, I just kept making country music. So I was like, okay, whatever. And I put out poor baby. And then some people from Nashville, my attorney, um, reached out to me and he was like, you're making country music, come to Nashville. And at the time, like LA was completely locked down. And, you know, I, I just, I was on unemployment and I was like, okay, I've got to do something because I'm stuck in my loft in downtown every day. And, and I'm starting to go crazy. So me and my best friend came out here for a few weeks and I was like, let's just move there. And then we did. <laughs> That's so awesome. Mm-hmm. I cannot tell you how many stories I've heard and my own story being one of them. The number of people who quarantine and lockdown like just completely changed the trajectory of their life. And for the most part, the stories that I hear are usually for the better. Of course, we also hear the terrible ones too. But you know, I really love hearing the ones where people just realize that they weren't doing what makes them happy and life is too short and quarantine gave them the opportunity or the whatever it is to go for it. Yeah, I think it just like, to be honest, the job I had in LA, I loved them so much. And they were so good to me that if quarantine hadn't happened, I would have never left because I just they made me so happy. It was like, my chosen family. So only because quarantine forced some of us to get laid off. Was I like, okay, now I need to go. This is my sign that I need to go. Because I quit music for a long time. I just, this was back in like, but when Twitter just started. So like I got access to a lot of people, a lot of big people really fast. And I think that I saw behind the curtain too quickly and I was young and I wasn't ready. So like it scared the shit out of me. And then that combined with like, you know, my boyfriend at the time, not really being the biggest supporter. I think I just, I stepped away from it for a long time. I really did. And so when I got back into it, it was only, because of quarantine. That was what really forced me to get back into music full time. Well, thankful for that getting you back into it because I love your music. <laughs> I really you. do. I <laughs> thank you. and I think you have the most beautiful voice and your style is so interesting and as an artist, I can relate to that where you have this style that is like country-ish but also R&B-ish and rock-ish and like all of those things really influence your your sound so much I think it's really awesome thank you yeah I think most songwriters kind of like it's hard because I grew up learning to sing by emulating other people I, I haven't had vocal lessons before minus like one or two here or there so I don't know what the fuck I'm doing ever so oh wait can I cuss on this <laughs> yeah that's fine <laughs> okay okay so I never know what I'm doing so the 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 issue with that is that like when you a lot of songwriters can write for different genres. And in my case, I can sing a lot of different genres because I don't, I learned to sing by copying Whitney or, you know, whatever. So like, it's really been, I think early on when I started in music, everybody told me who they wanted me to be. And I think only now that I'm, you know, now that I'm older and I took a step away and I came back, am I like, 
I don't think I have to be like, when I got into the industry, everyone's like, you have to have a lane. You have to have a lane that someone's done before so that the public knows how to digest you. But I feel like with TikTok and with everything and the way that it's moving, that's not true. So like, I just felt this pressure my whole career to be like, if I'm going to be country, I need to have beach waves and a felt hat and dance around in the sun and like be in a wheat field. And I just like the older I get, the more I'm like, well, who fucking cares? So all most major artists are doing a number of genres. So Mm -hmm. why do, why would I be excluded from mixing genres? Some days I feel like writing a ballad with church choir vocals. So so sometimes you want to make R&B. Sometimes you want to make music sitting on a hay bale with your beach waves. Yeah. Well, never with the beach waves. It's not my thing. I'm not I a girl know. boss. But <laughs> but yes, but yes. I think beach waves are beautiful on other women. It's just not my thing. Right. No, I know how you feel. Yeah, I just, I so understand that not wanting to be niche down because... I mean, that has been something that I've really experienced with with, with this, with the podcast and writing. It, people want you to focus on one specific thing. Whenever I tell people I have a podcast, they say, what's it about? And they yeah. want me to say true crime or cooking or, you know, self-help or whatever it is. But it's so much wider than that. And then at the same time, they say, oh, what do you paint? Well, I do this and I do that. I paint watercolor and I paint abstracts and I do that, you know, that kind of thing. They want you to niche so that it's easy for them to digest, like you said. But that's not who like we are as people that's not who a lot of creatives are like you can't just be dialed down into that and it's so unfair I think that the industries that we try to build ourselves into they want us to be easily digestible and that's what it takes to grow and then once you're there you can expand but you have to be just one thing to get into it yeah and I think that thankfully like with TikTok and everything I don't think you have to do that anymore yeah and like my label for instance they're super like they want me to be whoever I am so there are entities that exist that want to support a person exploring their creativity. I think it's just obviously like my friends who are signed to majors, the majors are like, how do we stick you in a tiny, tiny, tiny little box? And I think for some people that works, but yeah, I mean, most creatives I know are making a billion different things at once. So for me, I, I said this, but I don't know if it dropped off. Like for me, I figured out what works is like sonically, I'm always going to move through genres, but what I can do is get really, really intentional about my presentation, the way that I look, the clothing I wear, like my branding. That's where I think I can give people consistency Yeah, because it's never going to happen sonically. And honestly, I don't want it to because I get support from R&B playlisters and then I get support from country playlisters and I think if you have the ability to have fluidity then you should explore it so that's just I feel like for everybody who has a number of things that they're good at like yourself I think that what it comes down to is is identifying your presentation in a way like your brand your Mm -hmm. brand can be consistent and so then you can dance a little bit more Right. Yeah, Yeah. I think that's really poignant for a lot of creatives and just like of any kind creatives because that branding, presenting yourself as one thing in that way is how people know what they're getting. That's Mm -hmm. where the digestibility comes. And Mm -hmm. then you have the variety elsewhere. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's really interesting. I mean, it's just like how the TikTok algorithm rewards people who have the same background every time they make a video. Mm -hmm. Like, it's easier for people if you have some form of consistency. And I think visually is where a lot of artists find their consistency because a lot of artists that I like do dance around a bunch of different genres. And so, like, if you're a painter, you know, it's not about that you need to paint the same kind of subject or always use you know, watercolor or whatever. It's more about like when I go to her page, I can expect that she's going to be in this setting and that these, you know, this is her identity outside of painting. And like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like no one's ever going to like Lou Ridley if they like women who don't talk. You know what I'm saying? Like (laughs) without meaning to, I've kind of set my own brand up because I am the person who speaks about things that I think need to be spoken about when, when appropriate, sometimes when inappropriate, but I can't help (laughs) it. 
I can't help it. It's crazy to me. <laughs> no, I relate to that so much because I definitely get in trouble a lot for doing that exact same thing. It has always been so hard for me to just keep my mouth shut and just not say what I think needs to be said. Like, I get in trouble at family events all the mm-hmm. time. They're like, Elena, just be quiet, please. Just like <laughs> let this one Thanksgiving go without starting a fight, please. I'm like, <laughs> if they're racist, I'm going to say it. Like, yeah. that's the thing, you know. But anyway, the point is you have created that brand for yourself of being a woman who speaks out. You do it in your music. You do it on your social channels. You're an activist just outside side of that like you do a lot of work for the community where you are and I think that's really awesome and it's kind of a unique take in country music because so many people like you said in another podcast uh, that I can't remember the name of I'm sorry but so many people just dance around and they're there and they're making music and they're successful but what are they doing with that success Mm -hmm. But you really try to, with the platform that you have, like we were talking about off the air, you put the work in to have your success, but to also give back and use that success to help other people grow. And I think that's super important. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know, I I do like the distinction for me is that it is perfectly okay that not every artist wants to use their platform that way for sure I don't think people should like I don't judge I don't judge based on that I don't think it's everybody's job to save the world but I do think that for all of us there's something that we really care about and I think it would make us happier as a culture in in America if we leaned more into doing something about the things that we cared about no matter what it is you can care a lot about I don't know the way concrete is poured but if you you know if you get your little thing going then fine but I just think, you know, I don't know how else to be. I, I sometimes like I, I ask myself, I'm like, because I like with bless your heart, I had journalists flat out be like, listen, I love you, but my editor will not let me write about this because country music doesn't, they want to talk about, you know, who's got a new labradoodle. They don't want to talk about these things. And so I, I sometimes do kind of shoot myself in the foot by speaking about certain things because they don't want to talk about it. But like I said, I just can't be any different. If I, if I see something that I think, you know, like for instance, the TikTok I made the other day about how they denied DCS funding, but they put 500 million into the stadium. Like these are things people don't know. And if we start to learn these things, then we have the opportunity to make a difference. I don't know how you couldn't want to do that, but you know, to each their own. I just think I don't, I have, I don't think I found my balance yet, to be honest, if I'm being authentic, like I care so much and I think I'm relatively articulate, but sometimes I do react out of emotion. And again, like I am trying to find my balance because it is country has kind of shut the door on me because of some of the things that I've said, you know, and, and they'll open it back up when it, when it goes viral, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's just, that's where I'm at now is I rely solely on my relationship with other people that find me on the internet because the industry of country is like, I don't care that she can sing. I don't care that she does this or that. Like she's saying stuff that we don't want to talk about because if we keep talking about it, then half of the country music radio station, all of those artists are gone because they're all bigots. So, (laughs) so, you know what I mean? It's, it's tricky. I'm, I'm, I'm searching for my balance. (laughs) No, I absolutely know what you mean. And you said that exact phrase, I think, in that same TikTok where you said, I'm trying to find my balance, like... I, I know that I'm supposed to be a musician and so I'm trying to post more of that, but I can't be silent on these things when this is really hurting people. And I think that's awesome that you raise awareness, for example, um, funding a new stadium, but cutting funds for DCS. Like, that's absolutely ridiculous. And just like you said in the TikTok, those are pro-lifers, quote unquote, who are doing those kinds of things. Yeah. But they don't care about the children who exist. 
and that's who my need that's help. my thing and and this is my thing to me it's not republican versus democrat i don't what i try to do when i speak about something is i try to only present fact i don't mm-hmm. like and that's the thing for some reason well i know why because i'm not stupid but like people get so riled up like when i said if you don't like Jason Aldean and Brittany Aldean and what they're doing, then stop streaming his music. That's all I said in one of my TikToks. I didn't say anything negative about them. Mm-hmm. I don't know them. But if you don't like them, hit them where it hurts. Hit them in their pockets. Stop streaming their music. Stop buying their albums. Stop going to their concerts. That's how you te- That's how you show an artist that they're not using their platform the way that you want them to. Yeah. And people lost their minds about it. And I'm like, but it's such a neutral statement. Like, I'm not saying anything other than fact. These are numbers that you can access on Google that I learned from Gloria Johnson, who's a representative for the state of Tennessee. Like, these aren't, I'm not talking about Marsha Blackburn's hair. You know right. what I mean? I'm, I'm saying things that we should all, regardless of our political stance, care about, which is the fact that children are sleeping on floors. Where is your outrage? Literally, where is your outrage? There are so many people who have the means to help these things just by themselves. They could yeah. put a huge dent in these problems and they choose to ignore it because I don't know, probably because it is easier and it is, you know, better for their pocket. Like we said it, but at the same time, they are the people that so many of their listeners in specific demographics across the board, those are the people that they would listen to. Mm -hmm. And that's why Mm -hmm. it's so important for, I think you to be, what do they call it? Y'all alternative. <laughs> where, where I have not heard that. I love that. Have you? Oh my gosh. I keep seeing that. Somehow I've gotten on y'all alternative TikTok. What? And, oh, I'll send you some. It's like, it's like goth country or like, like, I guess Tyler Childers sometimes is a little you alternative. Oh, I love Tyler Childers. I love Timmy Tyler. He is an Eastern Kentucky boy. I'm from Eastern Kentucky, and he just has my whole entire heart. I oh, love him. Oh, my God. I love that. Okay, so some of my best friends are in Kentucky. That's really? That's so silly. Yeah, I actually think I'm going to shoot a music video there. Oh, yes, please do. I yeah. love that. That would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, my friend uh, Nemo and um, Marcus live there. Ooh. Ooh, very cool. Yeah. They live in Lexington, I think. Yeah, I lived in Lexington for a decade. Oh, wow. That's so crazy. Yeah. I yeah, know. I love Kentucky. I have to drive oh, sometimes. My friend has a farm up in Bowling Green, so when I have to do photo shoots on a farm, I go to her farm, oh, Christina. That's so mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, shout out to Christina. We love Christina. We love that. My uncle lives in Bowling Green. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love yeah. It. yeah. No, I I love Kentucky. I think awesome artists come from there. And, you know, Tyler Childers and some other, I guess, kind of like-minded artists in the area, they have kind of been championing this, like, hey, remember who we are. Remember where our roots are. Like, mm-hmm. it's not with the government. <laughs> It's with each other and it's with people who are going to help us and help us help each other. Right. And Tyler Childers, his album, Send in the Clowns, Mm -hmm. that got a lot of shit Mm. because he released this album. um, It was three or four just musical pieces, like just instruments instrumental and then he had one song where that that pissed people off it said how many boys would you have to drag off this mountain before you came off like with granddaddy's guns right and it was in response to the police brutalities Mm -hmm. and the black lives matter movement and he was like why can you not see that you would be furious if this were happening to you and in your community people hated that Mm -hmm. People lost their ever-loving minds. Mm. And like just in the state of Kentucky, the comment threads on the local news stations where they were like, hey, Tyler Childers has a new album. Comment threads were insane. Mm -hmm. People hate when people in that kind of position speak out. But at the same time, it helps 
people see from a new perspective and it helps those people in those demographics i'm sorry i went off on like a little tangent no no i love but the people in those demographics have to have somebody say something outside of their echo chamber if that's Mm -hmm. where they're stuck if they're in that echo chamber they have to have somebody who sneaks in and says something and changes up the narrative Mm -hmm. and i see these people like you and like tyler children and some other artists doing that. And I think it's so important. And I would love for you all to grow even even more and to be able to say whatever your piece is, Mm -hmm. you know, on a larger scale and not be punished for it. I have a lot of friends now who are incredibly successful because I've known them for such a long time. And the scary part about it is, is that when you get high enough in the food chain, it's so corrupt that all of these conversations can feel pointless sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I wrestle with myself, like, do I shut up? Do I just sing everybody's face off? And then do I do something when I get there or do I just be authentic to who I am and do it from the jump so that you know what you're getting if you support me? And what I've kind of come up with is you're just going to you're going to have to deal with it because there are plenty of country artists on the other side of the coin that are lifted up for their views. So I think also, too, being that I don't just make country has been helpful because where country music seems to lack in supporting me, other other genres make up for it so far. That's awesome. But it is, I mean, country's so behind and I think, you know, I don't know what it's going to take, but... I think if we don't want to be left behind as a genre, we're going to have to be able to shift a little bit here. We've been stuck in the same, you know, piece of mud for 20 years. Yeah. I don't mind that other kinds of country artists exist. We should have every kind of country artist. I tweeted something the other day. I said, it's fine that you write about white men in country. There's a million of them. I just think you should also write about everybody else in country. And that's the thing. That's the message for me. Like, I'm not trying to rip anybody to shreds other than, you know, a couple really horrible people. But like, (laughs) for the most part, if, if you can have a conversation with someone, you figure out that you guys at some basal level are on the same page. Like mm-hmm. I have plenty of friends who are Republican and all types of stuff. Like when you get down to it, it's humanity. But in Western culture, in America, we do not have any sense of community. We absolutely are all in an echo chamber of our own creation and we have no desire to be different and that's why nothing changes because even though there's a a set of people that run this country that have all the money like 99 percent is just a lot more than one and if we all figured out how to get on the same page they wouldn't be able to do the things that they do. We wouldn't right. be having a lot of these conversations, but we don't, we're we're arguing about Brittany Aldean on TikTok. So it's like, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know how the vibration is so low in this country and I don't know how to raise it other than delicately speaking and making music that's, uh, you know, you can't say I'm bad, I guess. So no, you're not bad. <laughs> At least, you know, not. so even if, even if you don't like me, you can't be like, well, she can't sing, you know? So right. <laughs> just keep doing that until, until it works, I guess. But I mean, Tyler Childers should be much bigger than he is. Yeah. I, and it's, I agree. I, you should be bigger because. than you are. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm working on it, girl. Eventually, if you if you just keep going and you don't get discouraged, which we all do in our respective fields, but if you just tune that voice out and keep trucking, eventually it always lands. But any artist that I know that's big now has been like, "Girl, I hit rock bottom before it happened. Mm-hmm. I thought I was never going to make it, and then something just clicked." Yeah. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing now is just keeping my head down and working so that I can try my best to make a difference on my way up to the pearly gates. Right. And (laughs) I I think that it would be inauthentic to you though, to just shut up and sing. Like that's what people want you to do maybe, but that's not who you are. No, I don't like... I'm happy to not be insulting most of the time. Like, I don't want to be nasty to people. I don't think that does anything. But, like, I can't, 
I mean, I don't know. I mean, I go feed the homeless every uh, Sunday and I just, people are hurting so bad and I just don't, I can't spend hours with them and talking about their lives and what brought them to the place where they're living in the mission or living outside of the mission. I can't experience that with them and look at them in their eyes and then go, well, I guess I'll go back to my high rise now and like, you Mm -hmm. know, shake my tits a little. Like, I'll shake my tits, but then also, can I talk to you about the homeless population? (laughs) Yeah, literally. (laughs) Like, because that, I mean, that's authentic to who you are. You can have fun, but also you can, like, you can lift up other people. Like, like we've been talking about, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely not. But I think you're absolutely right about the lack of a sense of community in our country. And that is ultimately where a lot of our problems come from. This very much like pitting brother against brother, like against each other vibe. And that doesn't help us grow or get anywhere helpful. No. And it's like, it's, it's so everyone's such a hypocrite now and it makes no sense myself included at times I have to check myself like but I I just if you just would think about things for a second you'd be like oh like it just doesn't it's so easy to just not have prejudice I don't it's not my business if someone wants to identify with a different gender it's not Mm -hmm. my business if someone's sexuality is, is, you know, whatever it is, like that person is someone who's living on this earth with me and I get to take care of them and have their back. And when I need it, they'll have my back. And that's it. It's not my business to judge somebody who lives up in the mountains and whatever, whatever. Like, but right. this, this obsession with like people's identity is their political belief and political parties were made up. They're Democrat and Republican are made up by the same people. The same people own one news station as the other news station. Mm-hmm. And then if you follow the fucking trail up high enough, it's the same people. They just decide how to funnel the information to trigger you so that you don't want to care for your neighbor so that in turn they can keep you in a low vibrational state keep you controlled yeah it's so painfully obvious and i don't know sometimes how to articulate it all the way but i think like there's a reason that a lot of our musicians like for better for worse kanye i'm not saying i identify with his recent uh, takes on things (laughs) but what i'm saying is like kanye west said it before a lot of people said it george bush doesn't care about black people he was kanye west has seen behind the curtain and at this point i think something else is going on but for a long time he was crucified for trying to let us know what's going on prince same thing prince would talk about stuff all the time there's a reason that all of our brilliant the the musicians that we think are genius are the same ones that try to talk about stuff and then we like we're like no 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 they're crazy never mind yeah there's a reason that everybody when they get to a certain point says the same thing to us and we still refuse to listen that, yeah, that's super interesting that you we don't frame it listen. that way. Yeah, we don't want to listen. And I think it's very much uh, the same kind of thing. At, I like have a reference at the tip of my brain and I can't grasp it. But it's the same kind of thing of where you have like some kind of truth that somebody is trying to tell you like, hey, your boyfriend is cheating on you. And mm-hmm. you're like... No, there's no way, even though there's all this evidence Mm -hmm. that he is, right? You just say, no, no, I don't accept it. Yeah. And it's the the same kind of, that like really shrinks it down very much, but it's the same kind of thing where people don't want to listen to something that they're they're not ready for, they can't comprehend, um, or that they don't want to comprehend. Mm -hmm. That there's so much more going on and ultimately like we are being controlled. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean... That's obvious, but I, you know, and, and that's the thing, like, I don't know how to, I don't know what has to happen for us to go, oh, this isn't working because we're being, we're being faced with so much 
and we just want to watch a 16 year old shake her hips on TikTok. So I don't know what the answer is, but like I, I tweeted the other day, I said, y'all are so upset about this Balenciaga campaign, but how many people were, you know, sexualizing Malu Trejo when she was 15 or Trevejo, I, I, I don't know her last name, but she's a big TikToker and she got big mm. for like twerking her hips or I don't know what the hell she was doing. But the point I'm making is like, y'all will, y'all will point the finger at Balenciaga, which I'm not saying that what they did was right. But what I'm saying is then we turn around and get on TikTok and, and watch children. Absolutely. So how, do you not see that that's hypocritical? If you're, if you want to stop the, you know, the sexualization of children, right. do you not see your role in it? That cognitive dissonance, I think, yeah. is how, I guess, how a lot of people kind of get by. Yeah. And it's certainly not right. It's not okay. But it, I guess, this is just like me theorizing because I don't know what to think of it. But I guess it's just kind of like, is there something that distracts us? And then is there something that we can be outraged by that doesn't touch us at all? You yeah. know? So yeah. like being outraged by Balenciaga and then getting on TikTok and watching, like you said, 16 year olds twerk and shake their hips and like do all this stuff that I'm pretty sure my mother would have literally kicked my ass for. (laughs) And that I know I would literally, my boyfriend's little sister just turned 16. I would kick her ass if she did a lot of things. Anyway, point is, it's easy to have that dissonance and to disconnect from it. And it's so interesting to watch people do that, like you said, and be infuriated by one Mm -hmm, thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then just completely disconnected from something else and not see that they are the exact same thing. And that's what I think it comes down to for me, which I think is the purpose of my life is I feel like when I did a bunch of therapy years ago, I did this thing um, through my job and everything around you is a mirror. So I feel like my purpose in life to some degree is to be a mirror, even if people are not willing to accept that information at the time. And that doesn't mean attacking people and being too much for people, but like we have got, I know I am present to my role in things when they happen. I'm present to my own hypocrisy and I'm working on it. And I don't think like cancel culture for me is the same thing. Like people are present, people become present to what they've done and and their role in, in the separation of all of us. And then they try to be better about it, but you'll pull up a tweet from 10 years ago and then cancel them. And then they be, they're like, well, why do I even care then? Right. But then you're at home doing the same thing. You're at home playing some other part in the same issue. You're just not presencing yourself to it because you want a virtue signal on TikTok. And it's like, We've got to find a a balance here of understanding our own role in, you know, the discord of America. We've got to, uh, like, don't tell me that we should forget slavery, but I'm supposed to remember the Constitution. Which is it? Yeah. Because the Constitution ain't shit. Girl, bye. But you want me to, you want to tell black people get over slavery. What are you talking about? (laughs) Like, you understand that makes no sense, right? Yeah. Like... (laughs) Oh, it does, no, it, you're exactly right. It doesn't make any sense. And then at the, like you said, people want to forget things that happen because it is convenient to forget yeah. those things and to gloss over them. They want to focus on the things that are helpful to them. And then at the same time, they want to start drama about something that somebody, like you said, a tweet from 10 years ago that somebody has grown yeah. after the fact they have grown and they have changed and they have realized that tweet was a shitty thing to say and they've made their life something else after the fact, you know, or whatever it is. I am sure that on my Twitter from when I was a teenager and I was like super conservative and like all this stuff, I know I didn't say anything like, I know I didn't say anything racist, but I'm sure I said some things like some pro-life, like abortion is murder kind of stuff. I'm sure I did because I thought that in high Mm -hmm. school, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that I said some shitty things, but that's not who I am now. Please don't cancel me for who I was when I was 16. You know, we can grow and we can change. Don't start 
trauma trauma well that too don't start yeah. drama about something just because it's fun when it's convenient to ignore that people can change and grow right and I think like what we need to do is if we if we have a belief that we should hold anyone to a specific standard we should be open and willing for people to hold us to that standard and we're not like we want to call people out cancel them ruin their lives which in some cases people do deserve to have the reset button hit but like but more often than not like you're holding someone to a standard that you would not be able to survive so again where is your role Play, like it, be present to your role. I, I had a guy the other day comment on one of my TikToks and I made a video response and I just never posted it because I was like, I'm being mean, but I'm not being mean. Maybe <laughs> I will post it. But like he, I, I had posted the, the, the money thing about, you know, not giving money to DCS, but doing 500 million to the stadium. And I'm sure you saw that video. I just said the facts of what's happening. Yes. And he, he commented and he basically said, you're putting the blame on the state. It's not the state's job. It's the parent's job. And he went on a rant in the comments on top of that. And when I made a video response to him, I'm like, so you took something I said completely out of context. And then you tried to put a blame on me that isn't for me, mm-hmm. but you're the same you're part of the same political party that says they hate cancel culture, but you're using the same methodology to dismantle my very valid argument. So which is it? Yeah. Like I need to get shirts made that say, which is it? Because I never, (laughs) I don't understand. Like I'm holding people to a standard and for better or for worse, I expect people to hold me to the same standard. And, and if I fail, I fail, then I'll get up and try again. But like, I go out into the world and I say things and I try to do my part knowing that I will be held to the fire eventually. Yeah. And I think I'll pass. But if someone pulls up an old tweet from when I was in high school and I wasn't allowed to be around black people and we didn't have black people and I said, you know, a word in a song because I didn't know better and there was no one to correct me. If that's what they pull up, then that's what they pull up. Yeah. But I'm prepared for that. I understand that that's how our society works. But it just, it, it's so much, it's so much of people not holding themselves accountable like they try to hold everybody else accountable. Yeah, I think that is a really valid point. And so- <sighs> I, like, I don't know. I, I don't know if it will stop. Like, mm-hmm. at what point people will realize that they are creating this environment where nobody mm-hmm. can grow, where mm-hmm. nobody can improve, like, and where they themselves certainly aren't growing and improving because they're just focusing all the time on pointing out what, what's wrong with other people, pointing out other people's perceived flaws. Mm -hmm. And instead of working on their own issues and working on the issues in the community and helping everybody elevate to a higher vibration, to a a better version of themselves, to a version of themselves who can just survive. Yeah. And the highest vibration version of yourself is supposed to be your proximity to God. So what, what about you being horrendous to people on the internet makes you a warrior of God. For those of you who are, you know, who justify bad behavior via religion and your, your relationship with Christ, like what are, what, what part of your behavior to you is if you think back to he's in the sandals and he's calling the prostitutes over and he's got the wine and the bread, which version of him is then bullying people on the internet? Not one version. Okay. So, like, <laughs> nothing about your behavior is godlike. So, even that to me is not like. It doesn't it, follow. No, y'all, it's not tracking. It's not, and none of us are tracking 100%. I'm not above it. Right. But I just think I see it, and some people don't. So, I'm just going to talk about it sometimes. In no. between, <laughs> in between singing and, be, and making good music and, you know, whatever, whatever. Right. But But that's who you are. And that is, I mean, that's part of your brand and that you even sing about these things. Like it it makes its way into your music, these issues that are important to you and are important to the people who are important to you. 
Mm. Like they make it into your music. And I think that's where all of this ties together. Like your purpose is to be a mirror. And I see you doing that. Like now that you put that phrase to it, I absolutely see you striving to be an objective mirror where Mm. you state the facts. You talk about experiences that you've had in typically like a pretty objective way like all of these things where you are you're just being your authentic self and Mm -hmm. growing and improving as a person and all of that and I mean I think you're right I think that is why at this point in time like country music hasn't embraced you but that doesn't I don't know it's not surprising but like also I don't want you to stop (laughs) well at this point I'm too deep in it so I won't but it just you know I don't I don't know what's going to happen anymore I mean who knows how long we're even going to be here so I just try not to worry about it too much but I just I can't you know I I, I, there's too many people suffering that are a block away from me. I can't go to sleep at night knowing I did nothing and nobody should be able to. And in whatever they care about animals, whatever, I don't care what it is. Like, right. We've got to learn how to, how to have a sense of community or we are going to fail as a country. Yeah. I think you're exactly right. Kentucky's state motto has completely left my brain at the moment but um (laughs) it's basically like united we stand divided we fall that actually might be it but it's something along those vibes um and because that is it like you have to be a community and growing up in Appalachia like that is very much something that I resonate with very very much you know the hills of eastern Kentucky you have to be a community or Mm -hmm. you're not going to make it. And that, like, I think that so many people in modern day Western culture across the board have forgotten that. Yeah. And I think like, I think that, you know, for better, for worse, a lot of the fans of country music are the last of a, the evidence of our forefathers for better, for worse, like in a lot of ways, very good. They're brave enough to go fight for our country. They're like, they're patriots, they're, you know, they're strong people, but we came over here and we started this country based in violence and, un- and, and that murder and stolen murder land. And, right. And we, I find that country music is the, the music of the people who are not willing to depart from that history. Yeah. So even if, you know, nobody cares about what I'm saying until 30 years from now, whatever. Like I just, if I can get to these people, then I've done my job. Absolutely. And that's how I feel about I've been thinking. So Mm -hmm. I relate to that so much. Hopefully somebody will listen to my podcast. Maybe they'll listen to half an episode just because they know me personally or just because they know my parents or whatever it is. And something that is said affects them and causes them to think a little bit differently and realize that, oh, I've been thinking X, you know, my whole entire life. And now I'm hearing directly from this person who has experienced Y. Maybe it's not so black and white. So I feel very much the same that if I can just help one person think critically, think creatively, like think about things outside the box that they're built into Mm -hmm. that I've done, guess I've done my job. Yeah, I just, that's it. And that's why like what you're doing is so important. What a lot of, a lot of people are doing what we're doing too. And that's what really keeps me going is like, I'm not on a, you know, I'm not the only artist in country and there's much bigger artists like Maren Morris who are doing their part and Dolly Parton, who's always done her part and Miley. And there are people that are willing to say the thing that nobody wants to hear, but it is, it is women and it is women who are on the outskirts of country. It's not, it's not the Carrie Underwoods, you know what I mean? Which I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking her, but to me, she's like the princess of country. She is. And I don't, I, 
if she has been outspoken, I haven't seen it. Right. So it's like, uh, you know, a country may not be ready for it, but we're all going to do it and we're going to continue to do it. And the reality is we're doing it because we love these people. I grew up in the South. I love everybody, but I want y'all to evolve with the rest of us because you're going to get left behind. Yeah. And your thoughts, your, your way of living, if it is prejudice and it is that way, like that's going to, you're going to, you're going to damage your own lineage if you don't let go of some of these crusty, dusty, musty ass beliefs. You gotta mm-hmm. like, let's evolve, Bubby. Let's do it. My whole family growing up was one way after spending time with them, whatever. My whole family now is, you know, they're not, nobody says, you know, there's not a, there. the prejudice doesn't exist like it used to. That's awesome. And it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't affect them in a negative way to not have a negative thing to say about another person. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's, it, it makes them more likable. Yeah, it does. It makes you more likable. It makes you also like people and like living more to not yeah. have that hate in your heart and to not have that negativity yeah. in you. Oh my God. I can't tell you, like I've been celibate now for almost a year and I'm so much happier, like it makes me so happy to go on Sundays and like hang out with the people at the mission. And like, I don't, my life is so much better when I'm doing things for other people. It's yeah. just easier. And I feel like I have more purpose. And I'd love to say that everything I do is completely selfless, but it's not. And nobody, anybody who says that is full of shit. Like, right. There's always a backdoor benefit for all of us. And for me, it's the feeling of knowing that I can, I can make, I can make a difference for someone with something that I, that doesn't take any time out of my day. And that's so easy. Like just having a conversation sometimes with the people when I'm, you know, bring them food or whatever, it makes the difference because you treat them like a human and it's just so, it's so easy. And it comes back to me tenfold. So just try being nice. Try being good. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's it's really not. (laughs) It's not. It's not. It really isn't. And it just does like what you put out, you get back. So if you're spewing hatred and you're like, I have people comment all the time, leave this country if you don't like it. Leave Tennessee if you don't like it. First of all, you're not doing what you think you're doing. It's not giving what it's (laughs) supposed to gain. Like, but also too, it's just like, I can imagine when people are really nasty to me, I can almost with certainty before I click on their TikTok, I know exactly what their life looks like. I know exactly, you know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. I see it already. And it, it could be a lot better if you were not nasty on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a lot better if you were just not like you wouldn't be the miserable person that you mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. Like, and your life is miserable a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah, it is. And it's not even that it's miserable in like a you can look at it and like they're living in like grime and squalor and that kind of miserable. It's miserable because that's the nest they've made for themselves. Yes. Yeah. Like they my my dad told me one time when I was little this girl was mean to me and he said Elena she is a miserable child and like that might be kind of mean but she really was a miserable child she never learned how to kind of be happy and it was like really sad looking back but that gave me such a perspective on the fact that she didn't hate me or whatever, like really, Mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. hated her life, right? And I have carried that with me. And that's what that is who I think of every time like somebody on the internet is mean to me, or Mm -hmm. I work in an art gallery, every time somebody in there is like a customer is like rude to me or nasty. I just think of that. And I'm like, they really are a miserable person. Yeah. Just and those like, are the same people. Hmm. Those are the same people. And it's like, again, back to presencing yourself to your own role in your life. When are you going to make the connection that when you walk out into the world and you're nasty, that that's why maybe you're also pretty unhappy. Like, when are you mm-hmm. going to connect the dots? Because all of us, like, I feel like everybody in our generation has a propensity for depression and anxiety. I think so when, too. Like, nobody deserves to feel that way. And you'd be surprised what just doing a couple kind things a day will do 
for your depression. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're on, exactly it's, right. it's like some days when I'm having a really hard day, I'll purposefully go do something outside of myself for someone else because it's sometimes the only thing that helps me get perspective and be like, okay, yeah, I understand you're bummed out about this thing or that thing, but like get some fucking perspective, girl. Like, <laughs> like there's so much that needs to happen in the world. Like the, the world does not revolve around you. It is not your world. It's, you know, that's you're a part honestly, of a bigger consciousness. Yeah. That's honestly like a great piece of advice. I think like go out there. If you are depressed, if you are going through it, whatever it is, get out there and try to do something for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And not only will that serotonin kind of boost you up, but like you get the perspective on my life is not as bad as I think it is as I lay here on the couch and watch Bob's burgers on repeat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cause that's what I do. And, <laughs> and it, it doesn't help. Like, well, I mean, Bob's always helps a little bit, but it does. It does. It, does. it really does. But yeah, I think you're exactly right. And you did um, a TikTok recently where you sang a song about like, yeah, Kim changed her body and Kanye's being a dick. And like, we know all these things are going on, but like there are people dying, like there are women being murdered on the streets of Iran. And that perspective is so important. And yeah. we're, I think that we as humans aren't meant to hold all of this in us all the time, the way that we kind of do now uh, with the 24 hour news cycle and constant exposure on social media and that kind of thing. Like I really think that that also contributes to especially our generation's propensity for depression and anxiety that we have all of this exposure to terrible things happening all the time. But at the same time, like the knowledge that those things are happening should give us the perspective Mm -hmm. that we need to say like mine mine is bad but like I can still help even if I'm going through something like I can still help or I can still raise awareness or whatever it is yeah. that's a little a little soapbox no it's okay I mean we've been on soapboxes the whole time that's we love the point a of the podcast <laughs> it is it absolutely is that's well, the point <laughs> Lou, I've taken a whole hour of your time. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for that. As we wrap up, tell us if there is anything else you want to leave us with and then tell us you know, where the listener can find you. Sure. So um, I'll leave you with... Uh... Please stream my music. So <laughs> yes, please. Um, because I don't have a big machine behind me. I don't have people forcing me through the algorithm. So everything I have is is based on y'all and your support. So thank you. And um, you can find me anywhere. It's at Lou Ridley. Um, some of them are at Lou Ridley X, but you can just hit the old Google machine and you'll find me there. Um, I just released a project about a month ago that was demos from some men I had dated. Um, and the songs are named after them. So it's pretty messy. I um, love those. <laughs> I like, I didn't realize that going into that demo. And then I kind of realized it as I was listening and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I love this. Thank you. Most of them gave me their blessing. There is one there are a couple that didn't, but I don't want to talk to them, so it doesn't matter. That's fair. Um but yeah, and uh go out today and do something kind without an expectation of reciprocity. Just do carry someone's groceries to their car, like whatever. You don't have to spend money. Just do something do something for someone and see how good you feel. And see how good they feel. Yeah. Mm hmm I love that. That's, yeah, and thank you for having me. <laughs> I, that's a, a perfect angelic way to end. And thank you so much, Lou, for coming on and for sharing everything you did with us. This was such a genuine, authentic, like real episode, I think. And I love talking to you. Yay. Thank you. Well, you can call me anytime, girl. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. 
As always, y'all, thank you so, so much for listening to another episode of I've Been Thinking. I cannot express enough how thankful I am for you guys, for the listeners. Now, if you're not already, make sure that you are following I've Been Thinking everywhere you can, everywhere you listen to podcasts, um, wherever you're streaming, if you're on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you're at, make sure you follow or subscribe or whatever it might be. Make sure you give us a like and give us a a rating as well. An honest rating, ideally five stars, of course, but an honest rating goes so far and I'm so, so grateful for any and all feedback that I get. So please, please, please please do that wherever you're listening, but especially on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, okay? Now, make sure you're following along with us on social media so you keep up to date with what's going on. You can find us on Instagram at I've Been Thinking Pod on Facebook. Search I've Been Thinking with Elena Grace, and you can find me on TikTok at I've Been Elena that is a variety of content, not just podcast content. So that can be fun sometimes. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for listening. This episode of I've Been Thinking is hosted by me, Elena Grace Campbell. It was guest starring Lou Ridley and sound editing and production is by Tyler Miller. And we are proudly presented by Stove Like Media. Thank you guys so much for joining and I'll talk at you next time. Hello, you sentient ball of stardust. My name is Casey Davis. I'm a therapist and I'm an author of the book, How to Keep House While Drowning, where I talk about ways to make it a little bit easier to take care of yourself when you're overwhelmed, stressed, have mental health issues, physical health issues, or maybe you're just in a hard season of life. Maybe you're looking for a place that you can come and listen to some practical advice. This is a podcast for all of the self-help rejects. We're going to talk about skills for survival and self-kindness. And I'm going to leave the pop psychology at the door. I promise not to tell you to meditate or to journal. We're just going to give you some really insightful conversations with hopefully some practical advice. So I don't believe you need to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. I don't want you to just try harder. And I don't believe that laziness exists. So join me over on Struggle Care, where we can find compassionate solutions that help us function a little bit better. Check out great deals throughout the store at Safeway. This week at Safeway, get mega packs of USDA Choice Boneless Beef Chuck Roast for $3.97 per pound with digital coupon limit two packages. Plus, Hass Avocados are 10 for $10 member price. And get Fuji Apples for just $0.77 cents per pound with digital coupon. Also this week at Safeway, get selected varieties of Lucerne Milk Gallons for the member price of $3.99 each when you buy two. Visit Safeway.com or head into your local store for more deals.